The covalent bond is a chemical miracle. In a covalent bond, electrons are not stolen, but shared, as we will explore through the remainder of chapter eight. But what does it really mean when we say electrons are shared? Are the atoms really as altruistic as the word share implies? Let's imagine a fluorine atom and a chlorine atom as two dogs. Both of these atoms are halogens, meaning that they are one electron away from having a complete octet. There is nothing that a halogen wants more than one more electron to complete its octet. Each dog notices that the other dog has a single unpaired electron. And they think, hmm, you know, that could be my electron. So they form a covalent bond. Each dog would gladly take the electron away from the other dog completely, except for the other dog's strong grip on the electron. These dogs are trapped together by their greed. The unpaired electrons of fluorine and chlorine are shared between the two atoms, which is indicated on their Lewis structure as two dots between the elements shown on the left, or more commonly as a solid line shown on the right. We call these shared electrons the bonding pair. Covalent bonds are always formed by an even number of electrons. The non-bonding electrons are called lone pairs. They do not participate in the covalent bond. Each of these atoms has three lone pairs as indicated by the blue dots. A covalent bond involves an interplay of attractive and repulsive forces. The electrons are attracted by the positive nuclei of both atoms, causing the electron density to be greatest in between the two nuclei. However, the nuclei repel each other, which ensures that the two atoms stay separated at a set distance. We say that electron density is localized between the two nuclei of the bonding atoms. Let's take a closer look at the elements of the second row of the periodic table and also hydrogen. The metals lithium and beryllium don't form covalent bonds, so we will exclude them. And while boron forms covalent bonds, it's a bit weird, so we'll skip over that for now too. From what's remaining, we see that as we move right on the table from carbon, we increase the number of lone pairs around each atom. Each unpaired electron can form one covalent bond, meaning that these six common elements can form this given number of covalent bonds. Carbon can form four bonds, which makes it incredibly versatile and the most important element in the fields of organic chemistry and biochemistry. Neon can form no covalent bonds, which matches the pattern of non-reactivity we've come to expect from the noble gases. Looking at the Lewis structures for the four simplest compounds of each of the period two nonmetals, we see that they each form the expected number of bonds. Remember, each line represents two electrons forming a covalent bond. If we count the total number of bonding and non-bonding electrons around each central atom, we will see that we've satisfied the octet rule. Some covalent bonds involve more than one pair of electron, and we call these multiple bonds. Specifically, when four electrons are involved in a covalent bond, we call it a double bond. When six electrons are involved, we call that a triple bond. The bond order is a number that represents the number of bonding pairs involved in a covalent bond. As you might expect, when more electrons are involved in a bond, the bond becomes stronger, making triple bonds the strongest type of covalent bond. Increasing bond strength corresponds to decreasing bond length, so the triple bond is also the shortest bond. Lastly, since shorter bonds are stronger and large atoms cannot get as close together as small atoms, larger atoms tend to have weaker covalent bonds.